Hello everyone and welcome back to our Power BI DAX for Beginners series. My name is Brad and in this video we'll be walking through some of the basic aggregation functions like sum, average, and count. We'll also be covering the max and min functions. These all serve as an important baseline in our overall understanding of DAX because they help us answer so many questions about our data. All right, let's take a look. Today, we're going to start working with a new data set that's got more fields and records for us to work with. What's even better is that Microsoft makes this data set readily available to you through Power BI Desktop. So if you like, you can also connect to it and follow along with the video. To find the data set, go ahead and open up Power BI Desktop and then click on Use Sample Data. In this next little pop-up, go ahead and click Load Sample Data. And this will bring us to our little preview navigator here. Just so go ahead and click on financials and we see our preview load. Let's go ahead and click on transform data. And here in the power query editor, we can take a closer look at our fields that we've got loaded up here. So we've got segment, which is just sort of a categorization field. Uh, we've got country product, we've got some quantitative fields here. So units sold, sale price, gross sales, sales, cost of goods sold, profit, and it looks like we've got some date fields here as well. So this all looks good. Let's go ahead and click close and apply. And we can see that our data loaded successfully. We've got our new table here with all of our fields and the data pane over to the right. Now the first function we're going to work with is sum, which is a nice tidy way of just adding together all of the numbers in a column. And the sum syntax is quite simple. It's the word sum, then the name of a column enclosed within parentheses. So let's go ahead and move over to our table view here. And we can take a look at all of our fields once they populate, there we go. And we can see that we have a profit column here for us, but um, we don't have any insight into our total profit metric yet in a way that kind of sets our report up for future success. And what do I mean by that? Well, we actually can see our total profit numbers right now if we add in a table visual to our canvas and select the profit field. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So select table and then profit. And we see our, our sum of profit metric here, which is uh, just shy of 17 million. However, as a best practice for any column in your data model that you'll be performing calculations on, you should create an explicit measure, even for things as simple as sums and averages. Uh, one reason for this is that editing a single measure when your data or logic changes in the future is much simpler than having to work through each individual visual that contains your implicit calculation or dragged in field as we did just now with the profit. Now, if you're not sure what a measure is, I'd recommend going back and watching the first video in the series where I walk through measures and calculated columns. All right, let's start creating our measure by right-clicking on our financials data set in the data pane and then selecting new measure. And let's call this new measure total profit. On the right side of the equation is where we'll put our function. So let's type in sum and we can go ahead and hit enter. Next, we'll want to identify which column we'd like to perform this action on. And if we start typing in profit, then IntelliSense will present that table and column context to us here. So let's go ahead and click on that field and then we'll add in our closing parentheses and hit enter. And if we look back over to our data pane, we can see total profit has been added to our data table. Let's go ahead and pull in a card visual to our canvas and then click on this total profit field. So this looks close to the same value we have in our table visual, but we can edit the formatting a bit here to show all of the digits in our metric. So let's go ahead and open the format pane then under a callout value, let's change display units to none. 
and uh, we can now see our entire total profit number verifying that it does indeed match up. As another best practice, we should be grouping all of our measures together in their own separate table, especially if we are going to have several tables in our uh, full data model. Having various measures stored on different tables can be confusing and time consuming when you're trying to track down your metrics. Now, even though we only have one data table in our report right now, let's go ahead and walk through adding a table specifically for measures. And we can start that by going up to our ribbon and clicking enter data, which brings up a create table window. Down here in the name field, I'm just going to enter in measures table and then click load. We can see over in our data pane that the measures table has now been added. And if we expand it, we can see the blank column one has been loaded in as well. Now to add our total profit measure into this new measures table, let's go ahead and go over to our model view. And let's make sure we have total profit selected. We do, and our little properties pane comes up here. Now up, up at the top under home table, uh, financials is currently selected, but if we drop this menu down, we see the option to select measures table. So when we do that, we'll actually see our total profit field go uh, move to the measures table from financials. Another way that we can do this is by simply dragging and dropping. So if I click and hold total profit and just drag it down to measures table, that will move it to the new table. As a last bit of cleanup here, let's just go ahead and right click on our column one and we'll delete this from the model since we're going to not need that. All right, from here, let's go ahead and go back to our table view and let's click on financials. And we're going to create a new measure by using the average function. Uh, this function simply calculates the mean of all of the numbers in a column. And the syntax here is very similar to sum in that we name our measure and then use our average function followed by the referenced column in parentheses. So to create this new measure within our measures table, we're going to select that measures table and then click on these three dots and select new measure. And let's try to find out what our average units sold metric is. So let's go ahead and call this measure average units sold. We'll reference our average function here and let's type in units sold. Close our function. And we can see that the new measure is of course added to our measures table. Now let's check our work a bit here by adding another table visual to our canvas like we did with our sum of profit. Get that added in and we'll select units sold from our financials table here. So that's the sum of units sold, but we want the average. Um, and if we come over here to our little data pane pop out and right click, we have an option here to change um, from sum to average. So by doing that, we update our visual here and let's go ahead and add in our card visual and select our average units sold. And that looks to be good, but let's make sure our units are matching here. So there we go, we've got both our visuals matching, so our measure is good to go. Another helpful function we can use is count. Count simply counts the number of values in a column that are not blank. It doesn't add the values within the column together, but rather counts a populated cell as one and a blank cell as zero. Now, none of the columns in our data table contain blank rows, but another way we can use the count function is to tell us how many total orders we have in our table. So if we head back over to our table view and select our financials data set, and then take a look at the bottom here, we see um, that we have 700 rows in our data set. So that should be our metric when we create our count measure. Let's go ahead and head back to our report view and then click on our measures table and select new measure. Let's go ahead and call this just count of orders. 
call account function. And really we can reference any of our fields, but uh, let's go ahead and just select segment and hit enter. Now in a more developed data set, we should probably see a unique identifier for each unique order, like an order ID. And in that case, we could reference the order ID and account function. But for now, this will work. So let's go ahead and add in another table. We'll select segment and then right click segment in our little data pop out here and just click count. So we've got our, our 700 there. And then we'll go ahead and add in our card visual and then add in our new measure. There we go. For our last few measures, let's try to answer the question, what are our highest and lowest sales? By using the max and min functions, we can display these metrics and also have them automatically update each time our report is refreshed. First, let's create our max measure, which will return the largest value in a column. We'll go ahead and click on measures table, create new measure. Let's call this max sale. We'll reference our max function and then call our sales column. Once that's created, let's go ahead and do the same for our min sale. And let's go ahead and add in a couple card visuals to display those new measures. Do the max sale first and we'll clean up our display units. that and take out max and put in min sale for our smallest sale. All right, from here, let's go ahead and head over to our table view on our financials data set. And if we find our sales column here, we go ahead and uh, click to sort this by ascending. You see that the lowest sale is 1,655.08. And if we come back and check that here, Looks like that checks out. Let's do the same for our max sale. Sort by descending. And 1,159,200 matches up with our max sale here. So measures are looking good. One final thing I'd like to show here is how all of our measures are dynamic within a date context when we use a slicer. Let's go ahead and add a slicer to our canvas, then select the date field from our financials table. We'll resize this a little bit. And you can see as we move our little slider here that all of the measures are going to update based on our date constraint selections. This can also be done uh, through other contexts like product. So let's go ahead and add another slicer and pull in product. Now we can update our metrics by selecting specific products here. Or we could get even more granular and select specific products and dates. And all this grants our report users much more freedom and customization in viewing the data that's most valuable to them. To recap, we covered the sum, average, count, max, and min functions by building out measures that allow us to start analyzing our data set. We then checked these measures to confirm we constructed them correctly. Now, these functions are a great first step into answering real world questions in reporting. And we even saw how slicers can be a helpful tool in providing our report users more depth in Power BI. We'll go ahead and stop there for now, but if you have any questions about this content or would like the BIX team to cover a topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on future videos, and thanks for watching.